bit. Uh, I agree with some of what he says. Um, I speak out because I believe that forcing unrealistic, expensive energy solutions upon the poor is, is going to kill people. We know that poverty kills. That's not theoretical. It happens today. I would rather save people today from poverty than theoretically save people in the future. You've also said that carbon dioxide can make the planet greener? Well, that's pretty well understood. There's hundreds of papers that have been published by plant physiologists that show that increasing CO2 is good for basically all the plants that they study, even crops like uh, corn. My long-term prediction is that eventually we're gonna realize that more CO2 in the atmosphere is actually a good thing. And considering the fact that it is necessary for life on Earth to have CO2 in the atmosphere, it's amazing how little there is in the atmosphere. The perception among my friends here in New York is that you're this weird outlier and all the other serious scientists say, man's doing it, we've gotta fix it now. Well, I hate to say it, but that's, you know, a, a characterization that's come, a, come about because of the media. I mean, people like Al Gore portray people like me as fringe and when in fact... He, he I, won't debate anybody well, either. Well, no, of course not. I consider my views pretty mainstream and uh, I know there's a in lot of... In climatology, you find a lot of people who I agree with you. I find a lot of people that agree with me but will not speak out because they're afraid that they might lose their funding. All you hear from on the other side from me are scientists who have decided to take a stand uh, publicly, uh, get involved with the politicians and... And if you say this is a big problem, that's when you get money to oh, fix sure. the problem. Yeah, Congress doesn't give money out for things that are not problems. I'm told we're destroying the earth, burning gas, oil, and coal, and we burn more than other countries. The National Audubon Society says there is no greater threat to our environment. But my next guest, scientific journalist Matt Ridley, says the opposite is true. Matt, how can that be the case? Well, uh, if you think about it, when we're burning fossil fuels, it means we're not burning something else. We're not bur cutting down forests and so on. Uh, and the more we burn fossil fuels, the more we can uh, produce fertilizer. And that means we use less land to grow our food so we can spare land for forests. So there's actually a net forest increase in a lot of the world, particularly America. But over and above that, there's a fascinating new discovery, which is that the world as a whole is getting greener. Places like the Amazon rainforest are actually getting greener, and the reason is partly because we're putting more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that makes plants grow faster. All right, so let's break that down. In general, there is less farmland and more land returned to forest because we burn oil, coal instead of trees. New England used to be 70% farmland, it's now 70% forest. Countries like Bangladesh are growing more forest. There's a new satellite which measures the, the greening of the earth and it's finding that about 20% of the earth is getting greener and 3% is getting browner uh, and, the, and about half of that effect is coming from the carbon dioxide that we're putting into the air from burning fossil fuels. So literally the burning of fossil fuels is helping the rainforest in the Amazon to grow. Now, you know, that's a very unwelcome message for the environmental movement, it just happens to be true. There's a very nice example of this, which is the uh, the border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Uh, the Dominican Republic is pretty green. Haiti is very brown. Uh, Haiti is almost totally deforested. The reason is because they use charcoal. You can even see a clear line the, 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 between the two countries, just looking from the satellites. Yeah, one's you, green, you one's can see brown. it on a satellite. You can see it in, in an aerial photograph. And, and the reason is because Haiti relies on wood for, for not only domestic fuel, but for industrial fuel, too, whereas the Dominican Republic uses fossil fuels, and it actually Sub subsidizes the use of propane as a cooking fuel so that people won't go out into the forest and cut down trees to make charcoal to cook over. So there's a very clear example of how the, the, the use of fossil fuels is actually good for the environment. And the propane comes from the natural gas, which we're discovering much more of. Uh, of course, it would That's be right. better in terms of global warming, if it really is a threat, if we could burn less oil and use more wind power or solar power perhaps but it's such a joke when you look at our current energy use we have a graph of that i don't think people know that three-fourths of our energy comes from those horrible fossil fuels uh, nuclear is 10 percent wind and solar are a tiny fraction i left out hydropower which is one of the best but 
We're, we're nowhere close to getting rid of fossil fuel. That's right. And, and I mean, wind is just an irrelevance in this argument. People go on and on about how it saves the, the, the planet. Actually, it needs a huge amount of landscape. Even if we carpeted the whole of Australia with wind turbines, we still wouldn't be able to make much of, of a difference. So a lot of these renewables are really not making a dent in the problem. The public doesn't buy this at all. How come? Well, the, we've spent so long demonizing fossil fuels over the last few decades that no wonder people think that they're the root of all evil. But, you know, when you think about it, it's not even just the environment. Things like slavery, you know, because we made energy cheap, it became possible to get rid of slavery. You know, so the, the humanitarian effects of, of what, cheap what, energy uh, are very important. Slow cheap, down. Cheap, how, how did cheap energy help end slavery? Because you use machines instead of people, basically. You know, once, once energy is cheap, you, you, you invent more machinery, you, you have factories running. And they're, they're saying, look, hang on, this is cheaper than hiring lots of people. You know, so it does actually, uh, on the whole, it, it undermines also uh, getting cheap energy. You either have cheap labor or you have cheap energy. And basically, it's nicer for people if we have cheap energy. Thank you, Matt Ridley, for that unconventional wisdom.